Now that we've talked a little bit about Earth-Sun relationships, some of the basics of incoming solar radiation, we'll continue on that conversation and focus specifically on uh, energy transfer, talk about radiation, and not only more of the, that incoming radiation from the sun, but also talk about Earth's energy budget, how we have that energy coming in, but we have energy also going out. So we see our picture here to start us off in showing both our Earth and our sun, and that energy coming in from the sun, but also we'll be talking about an energy going out, uh, or losing energy uh, from the Earth as well. And so, because we have this balance, we're trying, trying to stick, strike this energy budget. The song for to get a host talk, get in the mood for talking about this topic is going to be "You Get What You Give" by the New Radicals. So, as we go in again, as, as we already discussed, it's going to be some basics of input energy from the sun, sense of input to uh, the Earth system. We also then need to account for output. So. First part of this lecture, we're going to be talking about more of that incoming solar energy again, but also then we're going to move to talking about some account of output, because what we're interested in here is this idea of net radiation, which is the balance between the incoming shortwave radiation from the sun and the outgoing longwave radiation, as we'll talk about, from the Earth. And so you can think of this just like any kind of accounting, you know, whether it's your bank account whatever it may be, or essentially it's a simple equation of trying to determine, okay, how much energy input from the sun is there, and <clears throat> how do we then uh, you know, take that away or minus uh, the energy output from Earth. So we're going to have in this relative balance, as we'll be talking about through this process. And so we see this in an image shown here on the right, and we'll be talking through some of these processes uh, through this lecture, but coming lectures uh, and lessons as well. So. We first need to establish some basics around idea of energy and uh, types of heat transfer. So there are many, several different types of uh, types of energy. So talking about thermal and heat, and that's what we'll be focusing on here. But there's also electrical, kinetic, chemical, these other types of uh, energy transfer that there can be. And so that, again, this is often a topic that is more focused explicitly on in physics. We're not going to go too deep into the physics processes here, but we at least need to establish some basics uh, as so we understand how these Earth uh, system processes operate. And so we are going to, talking about throughout this term, you know, we'll hit around the, these three processes of heat transfer. And we actually name four of them, um, but kind of convection and advection oftentimes can be grouped together. So uh, in this lecture, we will be mainly just focusing on radiation. But also at other times we will talk about convection and advection as well as conduction. So I've laid out all of those here on this slide. So to note conduction is really influencing solid objects. Uh, is all we really can need to focus on right now. Convection and advection uh, really are tied to the energy transfer uh, within fluids. And then uh, radiation is tied to the energy traveling through air or space in the um, form of electromagnetic waves. So again, we're not going to go too deep into that physics here, but we do need to establish some basics of to note that all objects emit radiation or specifically electromagnetic radiation at various wavelengths on what we term the electromagnetic spectrum. So we have the spectrum of uh, different waves that are emitted um, that is really based on the temperature of an object. And so this figure below shows a series of different, um, you know, what's going on here. So we have um, kind of across the bottom here, the temperature of the object itself at which this radiation is the most intense. So I'll actually talk a little bit more on the next slide. Um, so we have from actually very cool or cold objects on the left-hand side going to higher and higher and higher temperatures here uh, as we move from left to right. Um, and then we have the frequency um, uh, the, of those uh, waves emitted, kind of the approximate size you can imagine those waves being from a very large uh, to tiny, tiny uh, over here on the right. Um, then the radiation type wavelength that we term those. We'll be talking about some of these uh, throughout this course, kind of you know, showing here how the wavelength decreases moving from left to right. And so we term its frequency or amplitude of waves increasing. 
Uh, and so then also will be important for us um, in terms of uh, especially energy emitted from the sun. We're talking about does that energy generally uh, penetrate the Earth's atmosphere or not, um, which is important uh, for us in a variety of ways, again, as we'll cover throughout this class. So again, for here, our, one of the main things we just want to focus on right now for radiation is knowing this idea that hotter objects emit more total radiation than colder objects. So you can think of that just as an energy basic principle. You know, maybe, you know, um, it's not the exact same analogy, but thinking of it as something like a fire, if you generally build a bigger fire, it emits more total energy, for example. Um, so kind of the same principle here that we're operating upon, so hotter objects emitting more of their total energy as well at shorter wavelengths, while colder objects emit uh, more of that energy at longer wavelengths, just as we saw on the last slide with that figure. So the idea here is if you, the more total thermal radiation that is emitted, we know that that object is getting hotter and hotter and hotter, the more total energy that is emitted, and also that, again, the greater proportion of energy that it's emitting is within shorter and shorter wavelengths. And so it's important for us when we're going to be talking about this idea in incoming solar radiation, the sun is a lot more hotter uh, than the earth, emits a lot more energy in higher, or excuse me, shorter wavelengths. Um, and so we've already talked about how the amount and area covered um, or kind of incoming of uh, incoming solar radiation depends on that sun angle, which of course is tied to latitude. Um, but to note that not all of the short wave insulation coming from the Earth, or excuse me, from the sun, excuse me, not all the incoming short wave insulation from the sun actually makes it to Earth's surface. Again, as we see in this repeat uh, image on the right, we have other processes and flows of that radiation in the atmosphere. That means only about half of it makes it to actually be absorbed by the land at their surface. Um, so we also have other processes of reflection and scattering, as we'll talk about in this lecture, as well as the next lecture. So to note here, um, so absorption kind of has this idea, hopefully you're familiar with this, you're just kind of taking in uh, of that uh, energy. And so you know, heat generally running, that would lead to heating in this case of the incoming solar radiation from the sun through heating through the process of conduction. We'll again, we'll talk about that more in a later lecture. But we also can talk about reflection here, and this brings us to the idea or the term of albedo. So albedo refers to the reflective quality of a surface. Generally, the higher reflectivity it has, the less absorption uh, that surface has, and vice versa. So if it has a very high absorption of all that energy, it is a very low reflection or a very low albedo. Um, generally, we talk about albedo on a scale from either 0 to 1 or 0 to 100 percent, where 0 would be essentially all energy is being absorbed, none of it is being reflected, and then as we move up that spectrum to the other end, 100 percent would be all energy off of that surface is reflected, and none of it is going to absorb, absorbing and heating that surface. Um, and so generally, all Earth's surfaces fall somewhere within that uh, two end members of the spectrum. There's some proportion of some reflectivity, but also some absorption, depending on it. So we'll cover that here more just a little bit, and but we will come back also to the idea of absorption, not at the Earth at the Earth's surface, but in the atmosphere itself in, in some future lectures. So this idea of albedo continuing on that. So just as I talk through, I mean, we have this idea from of it going from zero to 100 percent. We can see that on this image on the right hand side. So again, it's referring to this reflective quality of an image, and this is a function of things like surface color, of uh, also the angle of incidence, so that angle, that sun angle, as we talked about in past lectures, as well as uh, surface texture as well. So the, the the general idea here is that generally the brighter the surface, the higher the albedo. So we can see when we look at uh, this image on the right that we have much higher percentages of albedo, so that's one of the highest percentages of naturally occurring. Uh, land surfaces are that might occur at, at least some portions of time are things like fresh snow. Also, we'll be talking about in the atmosphere clouds and how they are high, can be highly reflective. And so we see that you know, with very high albedo so with snow, and then we start moving down, and then you know, much darker surfaces as we move down towards the bottom of this graph, um, um, we see a variety of different types of land surfaces here that are much 
generally darker, and then where we have most of that energy that is incoming being absorbed by them instead of reflected. So again, this is just showing um, naturally occurring or environmentally occurring uh, landscapes. We don't have also human-made surfaces here. And usually one of the uh, surfaces that has the lowest albedo we also can think of might be something like a blacktop, you know, a, a asphalt surface that's very dark and um, pretty much absorbs all of that energy uh, coming from the sun. And so it's the same principle as if you wear a black shirt in the summer, generally it's a lot hotter and you know, all that black is absorbing all that energy and coming from the sun than if you were to wear something lightly colored or white, how much then of that energy is being reflected. And so you can also look at this being mapped across Earth's surface. So here's an example uh, from last year. So this is from uh, 2017 example. We have uh, this showing an example from the winter. And we can note, you know, by looking at this, well, why does much of what we see in the northern hemisphere at this time have high albedo values? So if we think about that, you know, what's occurring in the northern hemisphere uh, during the winter time, um, you know, those months when the sun angle is least directly overhead. And hopefully you can think, okay, well, probably, you know, in many of these places in the northern hemisphere, we end up having these very high albedos. That's linked to something like extensive snow cover across many of those areas at this time because you know, we are they're relatively cold, cold enough to for precipitation uh, that will produce snow. We'll be talking about that in future lectures. But this idea that you know really because that many of that much of that area is covered by snow, it's going to have a much higher albedo uh, than other places where we see relatively low albedos um, and much because of much darker land surfaces. So then moving on to you know, th that's really focusing on you know, still on that idea of incoming shortwave radiation and just to re-emphasize say incoming shortwave radiation because again the sun is a much hotter object emitting much more total energy that's and that energy that it is emitting is in a much shorter wavelengths and the majority of energy that it is emitting is actually in what we term a uh, part of the electromagnetic magnetic spectrum that visible wavelengths and so um, those are the colors we think of and perceive um, and so you know that's part of probably the idea of why we actually evolved to see color um, because that is the most amount of electromagnetic energy that is emitted by the sun and is around us um, but to know again this that's all tied to the incoming amount of solar radiation and we can see that here on the left hand side once again of this image as well but we also want to focus on uh, this idea of long wave radiation and the radiation that is coming from the Earth and then is being re emitted or emitted out back out into Earth's atmosphere and, and some of it that is outgoing uh, radiation out into outer space. And so to know that a majority of long wave radiation that radiates from the Earth's surface and is, is long wave because the Earth is much cooler uh, comparatively to the Sun, it emits less, to much less to total energy and also then longer wavelengths. Um, and so we have, you know, the the amount of long wave radiation going from the Earth's surface is absorbed uh, and counter radiated by at the atmosphere. And so we can see that over here on the right, where a lot of, as we'll talk about in a, in a future lesson, we have a lot of the energy that gets emitted from the Earth's surface um, in some ways is absorbed and uh, kind of actually re radiated back towards Earth's surface by the atmosphere. And this is what allows our Earth to maintain. A relatively stable temperature. I mean, if we didn't have the atmosphere, I mean, we would have much more greater range in temperature fluctuations throughout a day and night, and probably Earth would be much less, if at all, habitable for us. And so, you know, these keep, in, as I just noted, this, these processes essentially are keeping in heat, atmosphere, and keeping the Earth at a much warmer temperature um, than we would without having that atmosphere, especially at night. So we can, you can see over some of the processes here, I've also had a link in, in terms of the lesson that you're reading over, um, some links where you can go and read much more about long wave radiation um, and some of the processes that are tied to what we're seeing here on the right hand side of this image. So again, now that we've talked about both the, so at least some basics of incoming solar radiation, short wave radiation, and outgoing long wave radiation, once again, we wanted to bring this back to this concept of net radiation. 
and specifically now that we've made our way through a little bit of the physics of it um, also coming back to this geography question of well, why does its geography and distribution matter because we can think if you know we that actually if um, if, we were, if we were to stop here and to have a thought experiment really quickly and to note that um, if you know if we just had incoming solar radiation and we didn't have that same amount relatively of outgoing long wave radiation you know, what would happen to the earth or conversely if we were to have more of that outgoing radiation than was in kind from the sun you know, what would happen to our temperatures and if we pause and think about those for a second hopefully we can think okay well if we had more incoming energy than outgoing uh, incoming heating would warm and warm and warm and we continue to get warmer and warmer and warmer temperatures and eventually, you know, our Earth would burn up and do crisp in a sense. And we would be far too uninhabitable. It would be way too warm for, more, for most organisms, uh, especially ourselves. And you know, kind of conversely, of course, if we had more outgoing energy, we're losing essentially heat in the sense uh, to out to outer space more than we were, coming, yeah, we we're getting in. It would be the same principle in reverse. We would get colder and colder and colder. And once again, you know, largely move to the Earth's surface being so cold and uninhabitable generally for most living organisms and so you know, because of this then we know that we can actually measure out that the insulation of that that me, that insulation and outgoing radiation for the whole earth are approximately equal so that is to say that the net radiation you know averaged out or kind of in which we account for rather that uh, whole amount um, of incoming and outgoing radiation across the whole earth that ends up being approximately zero, um, which may fluctuate slightly over time, but generally um, you know, we can balance out to about zero. You note that, okay, well, if we have we have this whole balance. Well, when we look, take that then to this image that I'm showing you here on the right, we can actually see why our geography matters so much because this is a map showing net radiation. We can see that we, you know, we're, we would expect a balance of zero, again, across the whole Earth's surface, yeah, we end up seeing that in many locations we are either above or below zero. Not actually that many locations that over the course of a year, this is being shown uh, here. Actually, this is showing one specific month, um, but of the year. But uh, you know, across this, we you know, if we didn't have um, you know that range, you know, we would expect you know, for the whole Earth, if we're accounting for everything, for everything to be zero. Well, we can see that then we have some range um, in plus or minus across different parts of the Earth's surface. And so we, you know, we could bring this to another thought experiment. Well, okay, well, if those places, you know, if we just had this distribution as being shown here, you know, why aren't those places that are, you know, greater, having greater net radiation um, in, in more incoming than outgoing, why aren't they getting hotter and hotter and hotter all the time? And why aren't the places like the poles that we're seeing here, especially, uh, that generally have a negative net radiation or you know are losing that energy why aren't they getting colder and colder and colder you know why don't we have kind of these extreme areas of earth's surface and so that's well, in part will be what we'll be talking about through the next modules uh here because when we're talking about uh, issues of the things that affect this like the composition of the atmosphere uh the greenhouse effect uh latent in specific heat and really beyond that now, things like energy, this energy movement, so those ideas of convection, and conduction, and advection that move the, a lot of energy around the Earth's surface from generally these areas of positive or you know um, surplus uh, incoming radiation to those areas that are generally in the negative or you know have are usually losing out on some net radiation generally over the span of time, and so we talk about things like winds and ocean currents that help move energy around the Earth's surface in coming modules as well.